afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Our program today touches on a number of things. We'll hear about family and about military service. We'll hear about love and about suicide. Most of all, we'll hear about courage, compassion, and hope. We will hear all these things because of this young man in the picture. Josh Pallotta of Colchester joined the Vermont National Guard in 2009 and was deployed to Afghanistan. In 2014, Josh succumbed to post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injuries he suffered while proudly serving his country. Josh was 25 when he took his own life. Since Josh's death, family, veterans, and community members have established the Josh Pilata Fund with the goal of ending veteran suicide. To learn more, I'm joined by Josh's mother, Valerie Pilata of Colchester. Thanks so much for coming in and talking with us today. Thanks for having me, Judy. Um, I just want to say, too, that I really admire you for coming on and being able to talk honestly and openly ab about this issue, especially when it involves your own son. Thank you. It's, um, it's hard, but it's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. We can't fix it until we... Um, address it. So Josh uh, always wanted to serve his country. He did. I remember when he was probably about seven years old I found a, a note that he had written that said I'm gonna be a soldier and ever since then he wanted to join. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from the moment Josh joined the Guard, you were finding ways as a parent to also help support him and his, his fellow um, Guard members. I was. Actually, I, um, I was pretty scared when he said he was joining the Guard and, you know, proud, but, but mm -hmm. very scared. Of course. Yeah. So I contacted the Guard and I said, you know, what can I do for support? What is there out there? And um, the family programs directed me to the parent network that they had. And that was an organization that offered support for um, families, parents of all brands of the military, not just the National Guard. Mm -hmm. So I started attending those meetings and from there met other moms and dads whose children were being deployed or had been deployed. Um, <clears throat> and from that, we wanted to do something to give back. We, um, being helicopter moms as, as I kind of was, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to do something to help our group of men who were in Josh's unit who were coming back. Um, we wanted to set things up before they got home so they would have some support services. So we did a lot of research and found Blue Star Mothers of America, which is a nonprofit veteran service organization that has been around since World War II. Mm -hmm. um, so we chartered our first Vermont chapter here in 2011, um, and that's been going really strong since then. And what we've decided to do is focus on financial support for veterans, um, emergency financial support, mm -hmm. and honoring our um, fallen soldiers' families, um, things like that. So, From what you know, what happened during Josh's deployment that impacted his health and well-being? A lot of, so Josh was pretty young. He turned 21 when he was over in Afghanistan, and he had never seen, like a lot of, of our course, young right. soldiers have never seen um, the likes of what happens on deployment. And he was in a pretty dangerous place. Um, it was outpost, uh, combat outpost Herrera. And there were only 100, 100 um, soldiers there. And it was right along the Pakistani border. And on August 11th, two of the soldiers who were in their unit were killed, um, Tristan Southworth and Stephen Deluzio. And that really impacted them pretty hard. Um, and I think that was pretty instrumental in Josh's healing when he came home. It just was something that he just couldn't get through. Mm -hmm. He had never really known loss before. Right. And so you've learned firsthand about post-traumatic stress, not only from your son, but from his fellow servicemen. What do they say about it? I think it's different for everybody. Um, some veterans are really crippled by it, and other veterans are really doing amazing. It's they found the coping tools and techniques I think that help them to work through it. Um, a few of the guys in his unit have been suicidal and thank God they're still here today and really making strides in their recovery. Um, and I think one of the big things is it's 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 not they don't want to be victims. They right. don't want to feel like a victim. Um, they've gone through a war. They've done things that they don't want to remember or they've had to see things that they don't want to remember but I think the being able to work through and having people treat them normally as a normal person is what what they want to see what they want mm -hmm. and so um, when was the Josh Pilata fund started and what's the goal 
So we started it after Josh died, when he ended his life in 2014, because of my involvement with Blue Star Mothers, we had started receiving a lot of donations. People just wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know how, so they just started to donate money. Um, <clears throat> and through Blue Star Mothers, we set up a separate account and just designated it as um, for funds for Josh. Um, and then we went through the first six months, I feel like, my husband and I with and the family with shock. Um, and you're numb. Mm -hmm. And we really decided we wanted to be very thoughtful in what we were going to do with the money. And we wanted to hear from veterans what they wanted and what they needed. So we chartered the Josh Pilata Fund um, and set that up as a nonprofit organization. And we're still trying to figure out what our veterans want and need. We don't want to jump um, into something and start spending money and have it not be effective. Right. So you're <clears throat> considering a facility. We are. Mm -hmm. So when we talk to veterans, specifically veterans who were with Josh's unit, because they're closest to him and he was the one who ended his life and I wanted to touch them first um, and see what they felt was needed that could have saved his life, that could help them. And they all said, we just want a place to hang out and be together and play video games. And from there, I had been um, doing aromatherapy work since 1994, and I knew that there were some complementary al and alternative therapies that would help with post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. and depression and things like that. So we decided we wanted to develop a facility that was a combination of a wellness and recreation center that would combine the complementary therapies and massage and chiropractic and yoga and meditation, these things that have been shown to be effective for veterans um, or anybody with post-traumatic stress and depression, and then combine it with a recreation center, having a game room and a video room and a place for studying and peer-to-peer -peer counseling. And then we wanted to have a kitchen in the center to kind of bring everybody together, like a community meal. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to teach cooking lessons for veterans and just have a place for a veteran to come and just get away. Um, a lot of veterans who are um, going to school and have families just need a place to get away and study. Just a time out. Just a time out, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's kind of what our vision is. And then we also want to eventually have a place where we can offer gardening and horse therapy and um, pet therapy and woodworking and farming and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Is it because um, <clears throat> veterans who are coming back feel an isolation? I think um, for Josh, I think he not necessarily felt isolated, but I think because he was injured um, and he left the guard and med medically retired from the guard, he lost that brotherhood. And I think when you get to that point where you're not interacting with the the brothers that you served with for a year right. um, in a very isolated place and you lose that connection, then you feel that isolation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was huge. Do you think it's difficult for veterans to get the support and services they need? What are some of maybe the barriers? I think it depends on the veteran. Mm -hmm. um, I think our VA here in Vermont has done a great job of making progress. Um, and I think with everybody regarding health care, um, everybody's story is different, and I think that's true for veterans as well. Um, we have veterans who go to the Lake Street, Burlington, VA, um, and the ones in White River, and they're having very great success. Um, and there are others who are frustrated. So I think that's a, um, it's a confusing, not a confusing question, but it's an answer that it's hard to answer because everybody's different. Right, so many individual issues. Right, right. And so how are you raising funds for Josh's house? So we're doing it by um, just strictly donations and events. Um, we're looking at doing some grant writing, but um, we haven't gotten that far yet. I, I work um, almost full time too, mm -hmm. so this is kind of like a my second job working right. on this. And we have a great committee, um, but they all have jobs. So we're really slowly trying to do some of these things. But for now, um, a lot of our fundraising is from events. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do a lot um, throughout the year. So you and, and the other leaders of Josh's house are also working on funding that can sustain the cost of running the house as well. Yeah, and we're really trying to figure out what that is. And I think part of it is having veterans come up with something to do to make money, mm -hmm. um, whether it be doing woodworking and selling the, the products or farming or gardening. Um, and that's something that we're looking at experts to help us with. We, we have a lot of people who are saying, oh, I have a great place for you, um, for Josh's house, and this is a great location. 
but we only have about $171,000 right now, and I think we need about a million to sustain it. So we're looking at ways to sustain the income and pay for it and let it support itself. Because that's really important to you that it's going to be an ongoing concern. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I don't want veterans to have to pay for it. I mean, we're, we've thought about maybe doing a membership program if veterans can afford it. Maybe they have dues that they pay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the, that's the biggest concern for me. So are there any upcoming events for fundraising? Yes, we have. Um, we've been working with 14 Star since 2015. And um, as our viewers probably know, 14 Star um, does a lot of community support. They're owned by veterans, um, Steve Gagne and Matt Cahea. <clears throat> and um, they have been doing a commemorative beer label launch mm -hmm. for us every year. So we have the f the fourth, let's see, 15, 16, 17, 18, fourth <laughs> annual <laughs> coming up on April 7th. Um, so we release a new can design that always has a picture of Josh on it, and they're pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we have our annual hockey tournament on May 12th, I believe, at Carnes Arena in South Burlington. And um, we're hoping to have some former NHL players playing in that tournament. So, fun. Uh, yeah, I can't say yet because we haven't been given a full commitment, but that's always a fun event. Um, and then we're looking for a barbecue type cook-off in the summer um, and then we usually do something in September around suicide prevention and Josh's um, date was September 23rd that mm -hmm. he ended his life so is it difficult to talk to people and to get people excited about going to an event when you have to talk about the issues of suicide and some of the other significant issues that are facing veterans I don't find it difficult I mean I, I find it difficult in that um, I'm the mom whose son ended his life, right. and that's difficult. And it's a balance between um, the grief and the go, 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 fundraise, let's do this. Um, but when we talk about these events for people, the 14th Star event, it was their largest event, and it happens every year. The Poor House has been very supportive, and they get inundated with people. They did a, a golf tournament for us. The Ray Hadley tournament was for Josh's Fund last year. Um, so. It was mobbed. People talk about it and they want to be involved because everybody has a veteran in their life, whether it's a family member or a neighbor or somebody you know. Mm -hmm. And they all know that suicide among veterans is very high and it's something that shouldn't happen. So it's hard to talk about it, but then it's easy to talk about it because mm -hmm. I think we're doing a great thing. What do you hear from other parents? Uh, um, there are parents who are struggling. Um, and there are parents who are just, let's do this. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard because some new parents whose children are now joining the services, um, being deployed, they're scared. And right. I remember I was there. And sometimes it's hard for me to reach out to them because I don't want them to feel like my son experienced a horrible deployment. Um, he lost buddies, he came back and struggled with post-traumatic stress and then ended his life. And for me, that's a hard, fine line to walk because I don't want somebody to be scared because of what happened to Josh. And I do think there are ways to help prevent that. I do think setting them up with coping skills as soon as they return or before they're returning. And I think I think the, the military is doing a, a better job of that. Mm -hmm. um, I know the National Guard I think since Josh's death um, has really worked hard on on pushing the resiliency training and I think it's it's um, some of the veterans are like oh, I'm tired of resiliency yeah <laughs> so I think they're learning from this and I think they're making things happen so I think parents if they get involved and they talk to other parents I think that's the best now you have a website too that has a lot of information maybe you could tell folks how they can find that we do sure it's um, joshpalatafund.org um, it's if you just Google, it's J O S H P A L L O T T A mm -hmm. dot org, and we have a lot of information on the website. Um, our contact info is on there. Our mailing address. Um, we have a survey out now. We're trying to gather information on what veterans want and need. So if you're a veteran and you haven't completed the survey, please do it to help us out so we can figure out how we can support you. Mm -hmm. We've got about a minute left. Anything you want to leave us with? A thought. I think, um, I think it's important not, like I said before, not to treat a veteran who has post-traumatic stress as a victim. I think that's huge. Um, I think they don't want you to feel sorry for them. And I think it's one thing to say, I support the troops, I support the troops. But 
get involved and find a way, whether it be veterans with post-traumatic stress or care packages, just get involved. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And the main thing I think is be compassionate. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Judy. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.